So on the heels of Alabama being ranked as the number one team in the nation per the AP poll, and the Oklahoma Sooners actually coming in at number two, Paul Feinbaum has said that either Alabama or Oklahoma have the highest chance of winning the national championship in his estimation. And we need to talk about not only the AP poll, but what it is Paul Feinbaum said and my takeaways from it. But before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from y'all. Hop down in the comments. Let me know. Do you agree with what Paul Feinbaum said in that Alabama or Oklahoma have the highest percentage chance to win the national championship? And do you also agree with the AP poll and how it has things slated? If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I have constant college football content and I have a lot planned for the upcoming season and I would love for you to be a part of this journey. And if you enjoy that content, be sure to like and comment down below. But with all that being said, let's dive straight into this. And Paul Feinbaum was asked what team outside of Alabama he gave the highest chance of winning the national championship, to which he said Oklahoma. Now, I was a little bit surprised that Paul Feinbaum didn't talk about Georgia, Clemson, or Ohio State, and I'm going to get to why I think they're going to be very solid teams this year. But first and foremost, let's unpack what it is Paul Feinbaum said. If Alabama doesn't win it, he thinks Oklahoma has the highest chance. And when we look at the holistics of the top five teams in the nation, let's say, I can understand the sentiment there. Oklahoma's defense has been getting better under Alex Grinch. And not only that, they return a lot of continuity across the board, both in the coaching positions and especially in key positions around the field, returning a really talented quarterback where you look at Alabama, Clemson, and Ohio State, they don't have the benefit of the continuity at the quarterback position, although all three of those institutions I think are about to have stellar quarterback play whether we're talking Bryce Young, CJ Stroud or DJ Uangalele. I have a ton of faith in all three guys. I think they're all very special so I'm not particularly worried about the quarterback play there but I think the sentiment is understandable when you look at the coaching continuity and the continuity in key positions specifically when we're talking about how talented Spencer Rattler is. But one thing that is just kind of humorous to me when we're talking about Alabama is that Alabama lost so much talent last year to the NFL draft. I mean, so many offensive guys that were incredibly impactful. And now we're looking at this Alabama team, and it is unbelievably talented. A lot to prove, but unbelievably talented nonetheless. They are so deep at so many different positions. Trying to peg down who the dudes are going to be is actually pretty difficult this year because there are so many names we can spend hours talking about. The Crimson Tide looks to be in a great position, and coming off of that scrimmage, a lot of praise has been led upon not only Bryce Young, but reports that the defense looked really good, that some of these young wide receivers and wide receivers in general looked really good, and that the running back room is as talented as we all believed it to be. I believe it's the best in the nation. Hearing Trey Sanders doing big things in the passing game is going to be paramount for Alabama in their pursuit of not only a berth to the playoffs, which I absolutely believe they will be there, but also in the conquest of a national championship. So hearing Paul Feinbaum say that Alabama or Oklahoma have the highest percentage chance at the national championship is not something I necessarily disagree with. In fact, if you were to ask me right now my two teams, which probably had the best chance, it might not be much different. However, I would be going further in that, right? Because I do believe wholeheartedly that Clemson, Georgia, and Ohio State are going to have really solid years, and I'll kick it off with Georgia because the argument I give for Oklahoma in continuity can be applied to Georgia. Now, Georgia is dealing with a few lingering issues in the injury department. It really hurts that they don't have pickings, although they do have a talented wide receiver core. But being able to return a quarterback in JT Daniels, who is very talented and really had that offense looking good last year under Munkin, being able to return your quarterback from last year and build upon that in the offseason should pay massive dividends for the dogs. Now, they have a real tough matchup game one against Clemson, and I actually believe that we're talking playoff implications in that game. So that is a massively important game, especially for Georgia, because if you drop that game, now you're looking at a position where not only do you have to win out, but you have to try and beat Alabama, assuming Alabama makes it to the SEC championship. I absolutely believe they will. I don't see anybody in the regular season being able to really test the tide, especially more than once. 
So Georgia would be in a position where not only would they have to hope Alabama dropped a game during the regular season, but then they'd have to hope that they beat Alabama in the SEC championship game, and you never want to put the argument in anybody else's hands, which is why that Clemson game is so important for the dogs. So I do give a little bit more faith to Georgia than Paul Feinbaum does, but I also apply that same level of faith to Ohio State and Clemson. Ohio State is a really talented team. They recruit unbelievably well. So does Georgia. So does Clemson. Ohio State has a ton of talented quarterbacks in that quarterback room right now. I'm a really big CJ Stroud fan. I think he's incredibly talented, but he's not the only dude in that quarterback room. They might actually have a problem of too many talented quarterbacks in that room, which I don't know whether is a good problem to have or not, but at least you have options of very talented passers, just a lot of them. And then we look at Clemson, and I don't really look at last year and think that DJ Uangalele had a drop-off in play. I mean, that kid right there was sensational in his capacities coming in for Trevor Lawrence. And when I look at that Notre Dame game, I don't put that loss on him. I've rewatched that game a few times, and every time I come away more and more entrenched in the position, that loss was not on DJU. He played really well in that game, and it just didn't come together, but it certainly was not because of him. So I agree with Paul Feinbaum in the sense that I would probably state Oklahoma and Alabama have the best chances of winning the national championship. I think Alabama is head-spinningly talented, and I think their defense is going to be unbelievably ferocious at multiple different levels. The DB room is sensational uh, from top to bottom, and then you have two true freshmen that have been receiving rave reviews in Kool-Aid and Terry on Arnold. I talked about this yesterday, but then you look at the guys that we think are going to be lined up for the most playing time in that secondary. You have Malachi Moore, Brian Branch, Josh Job, Jalen Armour Davis, Helms, and then Jordan Battle. That is a really, really talented secondary, and that's not even to get into the meat of that defense, that defensive front. When you have a secondary that's already talented, just think how much they're going to benefit when you have Will Anderson and Chris Allen bearing down on the passer, and think how good Will Anderson was last year. He's only going to be getting better. Oklahoma has a ton of continuity. Their defense is continuously improving under Alex Grinch, and they have continuity at very key positions, including the quarterback position, to which they have one of the top passers in the nation heading into this year. So I'm not surprised with the mix of continuity and the talent they have at key positions that they would be given such an opportunity per Paul Feinbaum, and he has them as the number two option to win the national championship right behind Alabama. That would probably be my one and two, Alabama being number one, Oklahoma being being number two, but I do disagree a little bit with Paul Feinbaum, and I'm not even stating that he would disagree with my points here. I don't know. He didn't go that far, but I do believe in the sense where I'm saying I disagree comes from, I think the conversation needs to be had with the teams just outside of that one and two, with Ohio State, Georgia, and Clemson, because I think they're all really solid teams, who though they have some questions, every team in the nation has questions right now, but I think there's a lot of answers at those respective programs, which I also think is echoed in the AP poll. When you look at these teams, they're very highly regarded. And though they have questions you saw in that AP poll, they're up there for a reason. And those questions seem to have multiple levels of answers. I'm very interested, though, in hearing from y'all about this because it was very interesting hearing that Paul Feinbaum this early on is already pegging Alabama and Oklahoma as the two best chances to win the national championship. That's it. See you.